So today on Electro Deli, we're going to have a look at some uh, components which are a little bit nicer, a little bit more expensive than your usual component. And this time it's going to be the variable resistor or potentiometer, commonly known as a pot. So I've got some uh, hopefully interesting pots here, which are a little bit more, well, yes, more expensive, more stylish, more, um, well, more precisely made than your average uh, pot which you might see on uh, a piece of modern equipment. Let's start by comparing the pots that we're looking uh, at today with a standard modern pot. Here's a standard modern pot. Um, this thing is absolutely straightforward. Um, it has printed circuit mounting here so you can see there are the three terminals of the printed circuit um, mounting pot there and then there's two prongs here which is simply mechanical support for the thing. It can only be used by mounting it on a printed circuit board. It's got no panel mounting uh, nut and bolt arrangement here and you can turn it. The knob is simply pressed on there. There are splines on the shaft. The shaft is six millimeters and the knob presses on. That's about all it can do. So a pot like that, absolutely standard stuff, you'd see that on things like modular synthesizers, you'd see it on anything that requires a variable uh, resistance in a circuit. Now that's a modern one, it's quite small. And you may notice that I've got the camera set fairly far back today because these older ones and the more delicatessen ones, they're a bit bigger. Let's have a look at a typical um, slightly bigger pot this one um, made by a company called AB. You can see AB on there, made in England. This is a standard pot of the 1960s, 1970s, into the 1980s. Quarter inch shaft rather than the metric uh, six millimeter. Much the same, it turns and that varies the resistance, but there's a metal thread here there'd be a nut that goes over this and you'd nut and bolt tighten up the nut uh, bolt it to the panel and then you'd run wires and they'd have to be hand soldered on the back here to run wires back to your circuit um, standard standard stuff from the 1970s uh, quite a bit bigger than anything we have today there's the modern one for comparison this one, of course, mounts on the board. There's no wires to be wired. This thing, um, solder tags. You can have just the same thing if you want, like this, um, which has got a switch. So you can um, turn the shaft, and this shaft has got a hole in it for some reason. See that? Um, that hole, I suppose, was for a, a peg or a, um, a cotter pin or something to go through. Um, so that holds the the knob accurately on the shaft. This one's got its nut present for bolting it to a panel. Once again, tags for the manual soldering on of wires and at the back here, a main switch. This is a double pole on off mains rated switch. And I was fiddling about with this a moment ago and I thought oh, I'd just turn this to one end and it'll go click. Uh, it doesn't. No, it, it, it doesn't like that. It goes like that. So that is on and off by pulling and pushing on the shaft. Slightly un unusual, but still a standard consumer grade at the time switch for a TV or a radio. Nothing terribly fancy. Um, obviously much bigger than the modern one still. So what about the fancy stuff that we're really interested in on Electro Deli? Well, how about this one? This one is a pot with it hasn't had its shaft trimmed. Uh, again, it has the um, it has the little um, thread here to mount it on a panel. But on the back, ah, this one's missing its back cover. And this shows us how the pot's made. It's actually a wire wound pot. So around the outside of the casing, there's a piece of insulating material with resistance wire wound around it. And what you can see there, that little silver line 
around the edge. That's the, the, the edge of the winding. So the winding is probably a few millimetres tall and you're seeing it edge on here. And the wiper, when I turn it, that's the wiper going around and wiping along the edge of the resistance winding and making the resistance variable. Clearly across the ends of the, the winding it will be a constant resistance and the wiper connects with this middle terminal and the point along the winding where that taps off is what's variable. So there we have a wire wound variable resistor or pot. And this particular one, um, it's, a, it's a black hard plastic Bakelite case. No maker's name that I can see on this particular one. But we've got some others, so let's have a look at those and see if we can see who made them. Where are we? This one. Looks very similar. It's slightly bigger, I think, this one. The bigger they are, the higher the wattage they're likely to be. Um, these things probably have a rating of a watt or two. Um, that's, there's, there are actually screws holding the, um, the terminals on. Once again, there's a nut to hold it onto the front panel, and there's the shaft, which you can turn. Quite stiff. Quite a bit stiffer than the, the modern one. And on the back, we've got, aha, a maker's name. It says Colvern Limited of Romford. And it actually says on the back here, wire wound. So this is one of the good ones. The rear is sealed, so there's a, a little um, plas plastic or Bakelite uh, cover on the back. And this one says it's 5,000 ohms. Not 4.7K, but 5,000 ohms. Um, there's a model number there. Um, Colvern Limited Romford, so made in England. Looking a little bit grubby. It's obviously been um, stashed away for some time. But this one is a 5K uh, pot or variable resistor with wire wound. Uh, now the reason that these are more, more classy than the, the ordinary pot is that they are much more precisely controlled in the, the actual winding of the wire is much more precisely controlled and much more precisely linear. You'll probably find in the data sheet for something like this, if you could find one, that it will give you a specification for the linearity of the pot. It might have a linearity of less than a percent. It might not have such an accurate overall voltage, uh, overall resistance rating. The tolerance on the resistance might be 5% perhaps. But the linearity will be very precisely controlled. So you'd be able to make a scale on the front panel of the instrument and a pointer on the knob and you'd know that when you turn the knob you get a certain amount of uh, change in resistance and your markings on your panel would be accurate to within, a, as I say, perhaps about a percent. Um, so linearity is probably more accurately controlled on this thing than the overall resistance tolerance. So this one is Bakelite, black plastic. What else have we got? How about this one? This one is metal. This one is 25,000 ohms. So remember this is resistance wire. It must be using a higher resistance wire, <coughs> which may be thinner. We can't see it, unfortunately. Um, but the wire might be thinner on, on this to make a higher resistance. Or it might be an alloy of some sort that's a, a higher in, in, in intrinsic resistance. So, look at the back of this. It's got completely sealed construction. And that looks to me like solder. It's not flat. It's not a metal disc. It's like it's had solder poured into the back of the, the casing somehow. And it's got ceramic insulators. That white material is ceramic. So this is a high voltage insulator between the terminals for the pot um, track and wiper and the metal case. So the metal case acts as a screen, so it's entirely screened. And it's been machined on the front here. You can see that's been machined. It's not just 
a stamped piece of metal or anything like that. It's been machined on a lathe. Again, we've got a nut on the front here to attach it to a panel, and we have the shaft, which we can turn. And that's quite a nice, um, smooth... You can sometimes hear or feel the, the windings of the wire as you turn it. And you certainly can with this one. It has a certain feel to it. Um, but that one, 25K, another part number on there. Unfortunately, I can't see date codes on these. I reckon these are 1960s. Once again, made by uh, Colvern, maybe 1970s. Um, it again advertises that it's wire wound, just in case you were wondering. And look at the size of that compared to the one we started off with. If I can find that one. We began with this little thing, which is your standard modern pot, and this Colvern wire wound thing is much bigger. In fact, it's so big, I think you'd get your entire uh, analog circuit in something that big. If that, if that was the housing of your analog circuit, and you had a couple of connectors and a, and a couple of controls, that would be a, a reasonable size. But no, no, that's just, just the pot. Just the very precisely made and very um, accurately linear pot. So I've got one more, uh, maybe a couple more. Um, here is... I've got smaller ones this time. Um, this is a smaller, still bigger than the, the one we're comparing with, still bigger than this one. Uh, smaller um, pot, I think this one is carbon rather than um, wire wound, or it may be some sort of conductive plastic track. It says 550 ohms on there, I think, which is quite a low value. Or, or is it saying 104 on there, which would make it something like 100k? Um, yes, 100k, there we go. That 550R is, is bogus. It's saying 100k on here. Um, no maker's name, though. I wonder who made that one. Better quality bit of kit. Um, this one is our last one, the STC. This one says clearly 500 ohms, a genuine omega, rather than saying R for ohms there. Um, plastic case, modern, uh, not baker light, but a blue plastic case. Again, you've got the three terminals on the back. You can just... Uh, someone scratched on there the, the uh, schematic of the thing, uh, the, the, the resistance. Um, itself and the, the wiper. Maybe I did that. I don't know. Um, this one's got a plastic shaft. Um, again, there's a nut for connecting to a panel and you have to wire it up by hand on the back, but you can feel, I don't think you can hear that, but you can feel very clearly that at only 500 ohms, it's fairly coarse wire in there, which the wiper is rubbing against and it, this is a wire wound pot, so it's of a slightly uh, higher quality uh, than your average pot. So there we have it. Those are some interesting variable resistors or pots of the 1960s or 70s. Um, wire wound, rather more expensive, rather more classy than your average pot, but the sort of thing that these days um, very rarely seen.